Okay, so I'm re recording two videos today, mainly because, like, I got sick last week. So I never really, not only did I not go to last week's summit, but, like, I didn't, the week before that, I kind of waited a while to, I was going to post a video, and then the moment I was ready to post the video, or record the video, I mean, because, like, obviously this is recording at the same time, I was kind of, like, sick. Mainly because it was one where it was, like, it was a mess. The reason I want to talk about it mainly, because like normally I wouldn't talk about this one mainly because it's like that sermon is better off getting no attention. That person, like it was Craig Bailey or something, I don't know whoever the guy is. Guy definitely preaches the prosperity gospel. Would normally not give people like that a second glance because they're obviously clearly wrong and idiots. Well, maybe not idiots, but they're definitely wrong. But the reason I more want to talk about it is the idea that um, the Holy Spirit can work in mysterious ways. Um, basically everyone, um, my church originally was charismatic, I think is the word, but now it's getting a bit more conservative. I don't know what the opposite of charismatic, but it used to be charismatic. Now the Holy Spirit is much more open and present in the congregation now, which is great. Brilliant. You need to be listening to God and the Holy Spirit to be able to effectively be a good Christian. You should be praying and listening to the word of God. That is a good thing. That meant is when this person got up and spoke, everyone, and I even t felt this in my small group, everyone got a different message, and everyone also felt like they, there were some things that weren't sitting right, and it was basically like, this person, they had a lot of good stuff, and they had a lot of terrible stuff. And basically everyone, because of how we've grown as a church with the Holy Spirit, everyone was able to go, that stuff's wrong, I'm chucking away. Not literally the chucking away of like, oh, I'm just ignoring it. It's like, oh, that's red flag, red flag, red flag. But also, this is what God's telling me through this sermon, and I'll take that. And like, I thought that was a very powerful demonstration of the Holy Spirit. It's like, despite the fact that under most circumstances, like his sermon, like you could probably write it off. Um, like, if without the Holy Spirit, you would just write off his sermon. Because it's like, mm. But because of the Holy Spirit, they were able to pick out the bits that were actually good and fed your soul and helpful and nice and true. And that's kind of what the Holy Spirit can do in your life. It's like, it just reveals things to you and it reveals stuff. And it means that even, even in secular music, I will hear stuff and it's like, oh, that's a message from God. This means like, I read Good Omens and it's like, oh my goodness, Good Omens, chock full of the fucking truth. But some of it's just fucking, and some of it's just fucking jokes and shit and not true at all, but also like, oh, like the broader message of that thing, despite being done by two secular guys making fun of fucking Catholics, ends up having a lot of truth and love and life to it in the fact that it's like, oh, humans are uh, well human when either good nor evil. Like, that's actually a really Christian message. It's like, <laughs> you're not born evil, but you're also not born good. You're just people. You're sinful, and you make mistakes, and sure, you might sometimes try to be good, but you're not pure evil, and you're not. But you're definitely also not pure good. And to make either claim of anyone or or of yourself is incorrect. When I say everyone's a broken person, I am also acknowledging the fact that I'm also. I will say, that's why I say you're a broken Christian, the same stuff of you are still loved and treasured and beautiful and can be capable of so much wonderful things. Because it's like, yeah, you're not perfect, but no human is perfect. And like, that's a, one message is the good omens. Another message is the fact that like, as, a, as Israel fail, like one of your main protagonists is like, oh yes. Like, basically all the angels are kind of like, and this is actually a joke on Catholic, Catholicism and the whole like oh wait we have so many minimum management and stuff and it's like oh yes we need to win the war and it's like no don't win the war humanity is humanity humanity is good in itself and it's like Beethoven wasn't actually and I was like it was kind of also this joke of like all the compo good composers went to hell and it's like that's a lie we have good stuff too like it, it's just like all that is good is good. All that is bad, that is bad. All that brings life, and all that brings life, and that's a very key thing because pain is an interesting concept. Pain can bring death, but it also, in some real way, is a very sure sign of life. 
Suffering is death, but pain, pain is something else. Pain can be used to prove that you are still living in a weird, real way. Because pain is not always suffering. Suffering is definitely death and takes away life. But pain isn't necessarily, it's neutral in a way. It can be used for good, it can be used for bad. And the re- and like, it's weird. Both opposing f- there are two opposing forces, and like a lot of people are like, oh, demon sex, it like, like, stuff sex. And it's like, yeah, no, that's not going to be happening ever. Because demons, if they are real, they're death bringers. They ruin you. And I don't even mean that in the fact that they ruin your virtue and cause you to sin. I mean, they do so much more than that. They suck the very life out of you and in some ways maybe they might do that through yada 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 but people seem to think that it could be fine and dandy and that it will be all right and yet all they are are death and destruction like the best way of describing the devil is the devil in your mind is a self-destructive spiral like that the devil, because it's self-destructive. In its word, it is destructive. It's taking away life. There is nothing good that the devil will ever bring because the devil cannot bring goodness. All that is life is from God, meaning that hell cannot exist because for hell to exist, you must be alive. Well, for hell to exist and you be in it, you must first be alive. And if God is not present and God is not there, then you cannot be alive. Okay, that just went on a tangent I did not expect. But yeah, um, power, Holy Spirit's powerful. You will listen to the Holy Spirit and pray with the Holy Spirit, pray for the Holy Spirit's wisdom, and you will learn things you will under- have a greater understanding and appreciation of the world. You will understand what is right. You will, you will have a greater understanding of what is right and what is true and what is false. And it takes a while and you need to do prayerful consideration and also go back and read your damn Bible because as much as, like, um, you Christians, like, Bible knowledge isn't necessary, but Bible understanding is. Like, they're two different things. I understand the Bible perfectly, like, I've grown up the church, I've like I've read another Bible. I understand it a lot and I understand its message. I couldn't tell you half the facts that most Bible nerds could tell you. I just understand it. There's a difference. Understanding your Bible is key. Understanding the message of the Gospels is key. Reading it and being literate in it is key to being a good Christian. Mainly so when you go out into the world and you're praying with the Holy Spirit and like, I don't know whether that's a message from God or not. You rely on your fellow Christians. You rely on the Bible. You rely on more um, denomination. Nope. Deliberation. That's close up. Probably not still the right word. Prayer. Just pray. 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 You might feel like people yabber about prayer a lot, but it's a vital key thing. It's weird. Like we've made. Knowing the Bible is like, oh, yes, you must know the Bible. And that's how you actually, prayer is actually more important. I would, in my mind, is way more important than ever being able to understand your Bible. Well, no, not being able to understand your Bible. But understanding your Bible is a key step in actually being able to fully pray and pray well. Knowing your Bible, front to back, literate Bible, remembering Bible verses, I don't do that. But I understand my Bible and I pray well and I pray constantly. So pray. Pray about anything and everything. You're walking home and you're going past the ambulance station. Pray over that. The ambulance goes past. You pray over that. Fire truck plus and fast. Yes, literally every time I hear a siren, I start praying over wherever that siren's going and whatever it's for. 
Um, that was just a habit I got into just to remind me I'm praying all the time. And I'm just like, it's, you know, I hear that thing, I start praying over that. And it's kind of a habit, it means you're constantly thinking and reversing and refocusing yourself back on the Lord. Because by doing that, the more you invite the Lord into your life, the more the Lord will fill your life. And the more the Lord will fill your life, the better your life will end up being. Because when that happens, you'll know you'll never be alone. And that is a truly remarkable feeling. That no matter what you do, you will never be alone. Bye!